that in the last days many false prophets will arise and shall deceive many and there are a lot of false teachings out there flying all over the place but we as believers we as Christians we have to know what we believe yep and we have to stand firm in our faith so the first topic that we're doing is the Bible is the Bible the Word of God or is it just another book <laughs> The truth of the matter is that the Bible is not just another book, but it is the very Word of God. It was divinely inspired, which means that it was written by men who were moved by the Holy Spirit to write down what was spoken by God. The Bible testifies to this in 2 Timothy 3.16, which states, All scripture is given by inspiration of God. As we are engaged in spiritual battle, an offensive weapon that we have is the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. That means that the Bible is not just another book, but it is an effective defense against the wiles of the devil. It makes us strong and able to withstand the evil onslaughts of Satan. Also, Hebrews 4.12 describes the Word of God, or the Bible, as living and active and sharper than a double-edged sword. It is able to penetrate the heart exposing its motives and feelings. The Bible is able to speak to the unregenerate, seeking heart and bring persons to salvation. Matthew 24, 35 speaks of the eternal nature of the Bible when Jesus said, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. God's word is a more concrete reality than the material universe that surrounds us. For everything we see around us is temporary. But God's word will endure forever. The Bible is eternal, immutable reality. The Bible is not just another book, but through it we can hear God's voice, experience his presence, experience his miracles, and know his love. So today, let's open the Bible and begin to read, cherish it, study it, obey it, and fully trust it. So we just discussed that the Bible is not just a book with no real power. Right. And even if I wasn't a Christian, I would have still wanted to read the, the Bible. Bible. Yeah. Because, <laughs> because when you think of history and the number of attempts, vicious attacks against the Bible, yet it continues to be published, read, it continues to be something that's always a topic. It's always this hot topic. When you think of um, copies of scriptures being burned from communist dictators, um, people buying over the rights to change the contents of the book, yet, that's like a real failure, yet, you, they still can't stop it. Yeah. I mean, just think about it. Yeah, it's a logical thing, but think about it. If it has no power and it's just a book, yeah. Play, a lot of it, yeah, exactly. If it's just a myth or just false stories from some history or some history lesson or whatever. Why is it still so relevant today? Why is it still such a big deal? Why are people still buying and reading it? Yeah, they can't get rid of it. Could it be that heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word will not pass away? Anyway, another fa a fallacy that we just wanted to cover before you get into your family discussion is that it could be dangerous or, or too technical to read so I shouldn't read the Bible I should have somebody read the Bible and tell me yeah I've heard that too where people say things like um, well but pretty much it's just one thing that I am not allowed or I can't read the Bible on my own I kind of have to wait yeah. for whoever my superior yeah. spiritual person is uh, to, to tell me what and that within itself is the dangerous thing because this means you are not actually getting to de develop or to build any sort of relationship with God. You are not hearing from him, you're hearing from somebody else and you don't know if that person is telling truth or not telling truth, right? Exactly. It's not too technical. The same God who breathed the scripture will open your mind yeah. to understanding what it is that he inspired. And that is the same God who indwells you through the Holy Spirit. Yep. Second Timothy. 3, 15 to 17. It assures us that the word of God is not dangerous. It's useful. It's useful in teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. We are to read the Bible. And there are other fallacies out there that you could talk about, but we don't want 
people saying, okay, well, I'm Christian, so I believe, I, I, you know, I believe in the Bible, I believe, the, uh, you know, it's the word of God, that's great. But consider this. So I ask the question, I ask myself the question, I'm sure I'll ask herself. If I believe that this is the word of God, because I don't believe the fallacy, so I believe that this is the word of God, am I living it? Am I using it the way I should be using it? I might as well believe the fallacy. Hmm. Because when you know that this is the word of God, somebody wouldn't just be able to come and tell you something and you just suck it up. Why? Because they, they look fancy or the sound is smart yeah. or they just have an accent you like and you just believe it. Do you go back and check it? Do you go back and check what does the word of God says? Because the word, I can't come and tell Sherelle, you know, Sherelle, God put it on my heart to say something. And then she goes to the Bible and she sees something different. God wouldn't contradict himself. Correct. So we have to know this. We have to know the word of God and it is in fact the word of God. And the Holy Spirit will minister unto us and teach us and guide us. It happens. So that's what, let's ask ourselves the question. Let's use it. Get your discussing because we spoke about the Holy Spirit twice so far. And that's what we're discussing, God's willing, next week.